Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Dauntless. In today's video, we're crafting the last of our legendary war pikes. And we're going to go ahead and take that into some blaze escalation because I'm going to need the parts for uh, the hammers, which are going to be up next. You guys voted and the hammer is going to be up next. Thank you guys for voting, by the way. Let's go ahead and dive into the build. Today is the first day that I'm utilizing Catalyst within a build. I'm pretty sure that this may, may or may not be the only Catalyst build out of all the legendary weapons that I've done. But uh, I wanted to try something new, mainly because the unique effect of Frostwolf triggers every time you use your Lantern ability. But since the Warpike moves around so much, uh, I wanted to be able to use that unique effect a little bit more frequently just to accommodate the amount of moving that the war pike does or can do um, when after you get a wound. So that's kind of my logic there. Uh, being able to use that unique effect a little bit more. Frostwolf's unique effect is very strong. But other than that, we're relying on Savagery and the uh, Aether Rush effect and the Catalyst um tonic the blitz tonic enhanced effect so uh that's where our attack speed's coming from it might be a little weird kicking it off but i don't think it will be but uh let's go ahead and jump into the build here we have berserker three galvanized within recklessly but executioner spearhead frost wolf's rip going to be using discipline with uh catalyst this time within the scarn's defiance we have berserker within the dark watch we have savagery in the chest we have a cunning cell inside the predator uh malkarian gloves and we have the stride of thorns a pair of boots that i don't really utilize unless i need a catalyst it a lot of armor pieces out in dauntless that have like a one-off use like if you're building a particular way in this case koshai's treads are the uh that piece so let's go ahead and dive right on in to blaze escalation yeah, I tried using this build without the catalyst and it just felt a little bit clunky to use and I want to try and avoid any sort of like odd clunkiness in the builds just so they feel relatively cohesive and I think with I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these see it's like in this situation it's like I need to be standing in the geyser to get my shields but you know behemoth moved or I moved and it just didn't really work out that well. It also was using um, Assassin's Frenzy, and it felt like if I didn't get started correctly, I wasn't able to get a lot of attack speed, and then it just really leaned into that issue of I either didn't have stamina to kind of continue the break. I don't know. It just felt really, really clunky, so I just wanted to uh, try and remedy that with Catalyst. Catalyst is a very strong cell. It's utilized in a lot of... Um, you know higher levels of play but i understand that not everybody always wants to i should have gone paragon's blessing um i realize that not everybody wants to use up their consumables however when you start getting into the later game you can buy them with rams or you know you have the unlock to get some additional uh some additional resources and also you start clearing things so fast that you can get like two um maybe two two waves done i wanted to reckless leap but you know what maybe we will there we go we got a wound got our attack speed see care back got pushed out but we almost have another geyser up so we can keep getting shields or you know getting more crit i don't know it's just more opportunities to get your um your shields up as well so you can take advantage of galvanized and go torgadoro's fury not a bad look not a bad look you have reckless leap for this phalanx i'm gonna go ahead and do my best to uh get an early wound and get an early break and it should just pretty much like die immediately <laughs> hopefully hopefully just short just short but it does have weak spots so that's fine yeah it was either this or uh running a uh pangar build which honestly like pangar might be a little bit better in this case for like lower tier content 
and that's something that i would need to test a little bit more but the frost wolf is still very strong and it has great synergy with things like catalyst and um you know having more critical strike also great for survivability as well it's just a nice hybrid um but if you're going for raw damage pengar might win out but i think you kill things too fast to where you'll just have like a single wave where one just doesn't exist like um like you won't get a how do i say this uh, you won't get a unique effect proc in time to to do like from wave one to wave two you know wave two won't have a unique effect proc so i don't know i feel like you want the dual behemoth ones like that's where you want the unique effect more however with catalyst it kind of has the the opposite problem where uh or it's like it, it remedies that by just being available depending on how fast you kill it but um you're able to just get a lot more mileage out of your tonics than you would the pengar unique effect if that makes sense uh that was like a very bad long-winded way of explaining it but i think i i think i got there hopefully that made sense but this feels very powerful at least um and that's definitely thanks to catalyst catalyst is very strong Even with Berserker, I'm able to kind of just free roam through here. And uh, I think that Catalyst would actually be uh, very good for early players as long as you, you know, you don't get complacent with it. Uh, getting like a certain amount of consumables and using those consumables when you're at your weakest, I feel is kind of just a, a good way to use them. You know, why use them when you're already absolutely destroying 10 through 50, right? Uh, as like an end game build. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get as much distance here as possible. Use my tonics. Reckless sleep. 6,000 damage. Not too bad. Torg is an interesting behemoth because, and honestly, I feel like this particular build, like a frost build, is actually very strong as a beginner. And this is why I was saying Pangar's weapon is actually pretty strong is um because blaze escalation is one of the uh, i don't want to say easier but torg in in general is an easier behemoth to break parts for and you can also get a lot of mileage out of the amount of breaks that you can get i feel like most behemoths or like most keystone behemoths on average at least to so like as a solo player for me i'm able to get like three breaks four breaks maybe but Torg has five breaks, and he has enough HP where you can get all of them. Um, just barely, but, uh, you know, getting four breaks is still really good. And because of that, you're able to get his legendary weapons a lot quicker. The head's already broken, so it's just his toe. He's already at... Like, he... Torg still has half HP and it's only like one break left unless I break the arms um, when he's Aether form. Which I'm going to try to do, honestly. Okay, never mind. Have I just not broken that leg or... Okay, there we go. You can tell the uh, parts are damaged based on those like blue lines. There we go. Broken arm. You get some leather for that, right? Um, and then he breaks the other one off if you break one. So you might be able to get six breaks. I'm going to wait for this. Uh, this special attack... I like to just gain a little distance and then reckless leave in, but this is a situation where the break is a little bit more important to me. So I don't want to kill him too early. So I have to be very surgical with the breaks or the um, where I place the damage. Got the wound. Damn, that killed me.
There we go. Got the break. Got the morsel. And now I can kill him. So six breaks in a in a single escalation off of the Keystone Behemoth. And let's see how much um I needed leather. So uh and that's just like raw kills. So most of the time I get like maybe less than 150. 150 might be like kind of like the average, but we'll see how much leather we got. So we almost got 200. And you need um so I think it's 1500 per weapon. And so you can see how you can kind of finish this one a little bit quicker than the others. I feel like 200 is a little bit low considering I got six breaks. I've seen 225 and I've seen even higher than that, but you have to get a little lucky with the duplication. But you can see how uh, getting the breaks are, is not super tough. I knew I could remedy the issues I was having with this build by utilizing catalysts, but I understand that not everybody is going to be able to use it. It is a little expensive to power surge multiple pieces, but as you're just starting out, I can see how Pangar's weapon might serve you a little bit better in the early game. So consider that when you're watching this video or after you're watching this video, uh, catalyst with the frost wolf stuff is pretty good, pretty darn good. However, uh, you can use this with multiple uh, frost weapons and you might see some better value if you're not interested in using catalysts. So thank you guys for watching this video and uh, thank you guys for watching this series in general. I appreciate that very much. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, check me out on Twitch. I'm just Revy Rad over there. Um, one day, maybe I will be Revy, but for now it is Revy Rad. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.